wherever man has gone, he's left his mark, literally. He's scratched, hacked, and scraped his lines, circles, and squiggles on the nearest thing at hand, usually rocks. What he's also left behind is a bunch of experts, all of them arguing about just what he meant by those marks, and also arguing about who made them and where the people came from, and how their theories contradict other forms of history. Our science specialist, Eve Savory, takes us on a rocky tour of those marks, or petroglyphs, as the experts usually call them. It's dawn on an autumn equinox in Colorado. As the shadow of this rock falls where what might be an ancient European language seems to predict it should, these people say our view of history is being challenged. If what we're saying here is true, it means that the history that we all learn in school and that is accepted as, as a reasonable facsimile of history turns out to be wrong in very important points. The Vikings who built this settlement in Newfoundland a thousand years ago are generally believed to be the first Europeans to see North America. But some people think Europeans were here long before that. This is a petroglyph of a very old ship. It's made in the style that was used to draw ships on the rocks in Sweden. Scott Monaghan, an independent film producer, followed a small group of linguists and amateur archaeologists. They took him to sites they say prove Europeans were here perhaps 2,000 years before Columbus. This is their theory. Ancient seafarers of Europe and North Africa, at first blown off course by storms, reached North America and soon were trading far inland. These are bold navigators who crossed the oceans, settled here, intermarried with whoever people were here before, and their descendants are the modern American Indians. The shape of this is rather interesting. Archaeologists say Indians sharpening tools made these marks found at numerous locations. This man says no, it's a language. Here you see the two stripes up there, that's a D. A language known as Ogre, ancient Celtic. This is how it looks in the 12th century Book of Ballymote. It is these seasonal measurings predicting equinoxes and solstices that have the group excited because at six sites, the Ogham translations are proving accurate. As well, the group says it finds references to the European zodiac, the twins, Gemini. And here they see Anubis, the Egyptian god of darkness, worshipped in pre-Christian times. Eve Savory, CBC News, 